Hi everyone, welcome to our week five statistics lecture. So hopefully by now you've got a little bit of a handle on why we need to be talking about stats in psychology and you understand a bit about how data are measured, how we represent data in terms of numbers in a spreadsheet, how we summarize data, which was last week, and why that summary of data is really important. Hopefully by now you've also had a go at playing around with Stata, which is our statistics software. If you haven't, then I strongly, strongly recommend that you spend some time um, as of this week going back over the previous week's Stata material and actually having a hands-on go yourself because that's going to be really important for you to actually understand how the, the statistical testing stuff that we'll do as of next week, um, how all that happens. So that's a really important part if you haven't had a go at that yet. So we'll start off today by talking a bit more about the normal distribution. So you were introduced to the particular kind of shape of the normal distribution previously. So we'll use that as kind of a jumping off point for talking about why the normal distribution can be really helpful for us to understand um, certain scores or compare scores to general population scores. We'll also talk about the formal processes that we go through when we're doing hypothesis testing. So the kind of logic that underpins that process, um, the methods that we use and the process that we follow to undertake hypothesis testing, both um, statistical testing, um, but lots of different kinds of statistical testing. And we'll also talk about a couple of different errors that we can be committing along the way. We'll then talk about different kinds of numbers, um, and that's a really general thing to say, but what I mean by that is different sorts of numbers that can represent different things when we're using um, hypothesis testing. So I'll talk about a distinction between statistical significance versus practical significance in the, in the form of an effect size. And then we'll finish off just with a general overview of different kinds of statistical tests. As of next week, we'll actually start talking about some tests themselves. We start off next week by start talking about t-tests. Um, so today is just really an overview of the processes and the theories behind what we do when we are undergoing formal hypothesis testing. So as I said before, it's a really important um, week's lecture. It's a really important set of notes for you to understand the processes and the logic behind what you're actually doing if you do a t-test or a correlation or any other kind of statistical test. Okay, so first off, just to recap a couple of things. So remember that when we're undergoing um, research, when we're undertaking research, what we're trying to do is to get information on a particular topic that we don't already know. So we're trying to address a research question, a research question being a new question or a new area of inquiry that we don't previously have the answer to, or we don't know something about. And remember that our research questions and specifically our research hypotheses, those predictions that we make, they always apply to a population and the population being the broader group of people or group of observations that we're interested in finding out something about. But remember that when we're undergoing um, a particular research study, what we're doing in that study is collecting a sample, which is a subset of our population, and collecting data from that sample themselves. So the data that we collect comes from the sample. The analysis that we do is done on the data from the sample, but the generalizations and the conclusions that we make from those analyses are always um, generalized back to our wider population. Those inferences that we make apply back to our wider population. So we start with the population, we collect data from our sample, and then we make conclusions back to a population. And the reason that we need to do that is because it's not possible, it's not feasible or it's not doable to actually collect data from our entire population. If we could collect data from the entire population, we would definitely do that. And in that case, we wouldn't actually have any need for this inferential statistical process. The process of undergoing this inferential statistical testing is to be able to see if the information that we've got from our sample is likely reflecting something real, a real effect in our population. So we're trying to see the degree of, of evidence or how much evidence we have to support our hypothesis in our sample and therefore whether that hypothesis is possibly or probably true in our population. And remember that we have a few different kinds of statistical hypotheses, and those statistical hypotheses are different from our research hypotheses. So the research hypotheses are the particular predictions that we make. Those are the things that come at the end of an introduction section of a research report or a research paper. 
And those are the specific predictions that we make about something that we don't already know. Those are different from the statistical hypotheses and the statistical hypotheses are things that are necessary for our statistical testing, for our inferential testing or hypothesis testing. And we've got two of those. We have a null hypothesis and an alternate hypothesis. And the null hypothesis is always saying that there is no effect, that there is no relationship, that there is no difference between the groups. Whereas the alternate hypothesis is saying that there is some effect, that there is some relationship, that there is some difference between the groups. I'm going to talk in more detail at the end of today about giving you some examples about the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis. And I'll also be coming back to talking about those each time that we have the lectures from next week on in terms of talking about the individual statistical tests. So remember that the basis of our process of undergoing inferential statistics is that we want to collect data from our sample and that sample has to be reflective of our population. And then we make conclusions from that sample that apply back to our wider population. So the data that we collect from the sample is used to make a conclusion or an inference back to our wider population. And the reason that we need to use these methods of the inferential statistics to do that is because we never really know if the information, the data that we've got from our sample is representative of a real effect in our population. So the reason that we need these inferential statistical methods is to see how convincing the evidence is in our sample. And based on how convincing that evidence is, we can see if it probably or likely reflects a real effect back in our population. Okay, so I'm talking about probability a little bit. So I thought it's, a, it's useful just to recap probability. Um, I'm assuming that you know the definition of the word probability and you have some idea of what probability is in a mathematical sense. Probability is talking about how likely something is to, to occur. So how probable, how likely some particular event is to happen. In terms of mathematically expressing probability, a probability is expressed in terms of a proportion, and a proportion is a number that ranges from 0 to 1. Or if we express that as a percentage, it can range from 0% to 100%. So if you have a probability of 0, it means that some event is definitely not going to happen. It's completely uncertain. It's completely, we're completely certain it's not going to happen. If you have a probability of 1 or 100%, it means that the event is definitely going to happen. It's completely certain that it will happen. And where that expression of probability lies in terms of between 0 and 1 or between 0 and 100% represents how certain we are that something is going to happen, how likely something is to happen. If all of that just seemed like a little bit too much, then this is the URL that I suggest you go to. Um, it's a free resource if you don't know the Khan Academy yet. I think I've mentioned it before, but um, they're really great free resources online that has a lot of maths and stats information. So the URL there is just one that talks about general probability. So because probability is really, um, is really integral to the whole process of inferential statistics um, and statistical testing, it's important that you have a general idea of what I'm talking about if I talk about prob 